Got a Honda Civic in the shop that's having an issue with one of the power windows. Let's check it out, see if we can't get it fixed. This is what we're working on today, an 8th generation Honda Civic EX. And the complaint is this right rear window won't roll down. Okay, with the key on, we'll just go over here to our master switch and see if that rear window rolls down. And I'm not hearing anything. Now, we want to check these other windows and make sure there's not an issue um, because then that could be a problem with our switch here or something else. And I can see our rear window is moving. And let's check the front passenger. And it is moving too. So it appears that these windows work. And we can try the driver's side too. And it's working also. All right, so these three windows work. This one is not, at least here from the switch. Now we do need to make sure, you know, and verify these other three windows because this switch right here, that obviously, that turns them all off. So you can see that the windows no longer work. So if all three of these are not working, make sure that this is not activated. And then of course, if this switch is messed up, then that's also gonna cause these three to not work. And in that case, you'd have to replace the whole master switch. But that's why we always wanna check all three, or actually all four, just to kind of eliminate this. So we don't think this is the issue. Let's go over to the other window. Before we go to the window that's not working, let's go to the doors that were working and just make sure they work at the switch itself. And we can see this left rear door does. And over here at the right front, or passenger front, and this one's working too. And now the right rear, the one that's not working. Let's see if it works at the switch here. And we get the same thing. It is not working at the switch. Same thing as the master switch. And of course, all these tests were with the key on still. We want to make sure we're doing our tests with the key on because otherwise we won't have power back here. But it appears that our problem is isolated to this door or this window right here. Now we need to know the system that we're working on. So I went ahead and printed up some wiring diagrams. These are Honda factory wiring diagrams, and this is typically what I'll show you. But you can see that this uh, window system is spread across three pages. In this case, I went ahead and um, printed up the power distribution look, and you can see we have everything, although it's a lot smaller, we have everything on one page. It's a little bit easier to look at. Now, before we look at the wiring diagram, it's important to understand how an electrical motor works. Basically, in order for an electrical motor to spin, we need power coming from the battery, and we need a ground somewhere along the body. And by having power and ground, it'll make our electrical motor work. And now these are reversible motors, so if we put power on one side and ground on the other, it'll spin one direction. And if we reverse those, say we put power on this side and then ground on the other, it'll go the opposite direction. And that's how these window motors work, they're reversible, and that's how the window either goes up or it goes down just by reversing which way the power and ground is. And to point out some of the components on our wiring diagram here, this little symbol, the plus symbol, that's our battery. This box right here is our under hood fuse box. This box right here is our under dash fuse box. This box right here is gonna be our power window master switch. So this is the switch in the driver's door. And this is gonna be the motor for the driver's door. Over here, these three boxes right here are going to be the three switches at each door. This is the front passenger window switch, the left rear window switch, and the right rear window switch. And then these are the motors for each one of the doors. So the front passenger motor, left passenger motor, and the right rear passenger motor. All right, if we follow our power coming in, it goes through a 40 amp fuse, the number four in the under hood uh, fuse box. Then it comes over to our under dash fuse box. And from there it splits. We're going to go to fuse 26 right here. And then we're also going to go through a power window relay and then on to fuse 30, fuse 33, and for fuse 32. And those are all 20 amp fuses. And in this one also. And from there, it's going to go down to our master switch. And in fact, it's going to go to the control unit inside the master switch. And then over here off the power relay, it's going to go also to our power master switch. Those three um, window switches the front passenger, left rear and right rear. And also, as you can see, each one will branch off and it also brings power to the actual switch at each door also. And of course, for our system to work, we need a ground. So if we look at this G503 ground here, 
that's going to go up to our control unit which is inside the power window switch and if we follow this ground over here which is also G503 so they're both the same this one comes up also to our master switch and it goes through that main switch now that's the switch we turned on and off to check to you know to see if the three windows were all not working that's the switch that will turn off all passenger windows there in the power switch or the power master switch and we already checked that and it appears to be working but the ground goes through that and then it goes to each of the three passenger switches right there in the uh, power window master switch so you can see how this circuit works when you turn that switch off or bring it up what that does is that disconnects the ground right there so once you don't have any ground to these three windows well then the, none of the circuit will work so that's how that switch works and if we follow the ground right here you can see not only does it go up to each of our switches the contacts inside but these little spots right here and right here that represents when the switch is not being used and so if we just follow it along that ground comes down and it comes right to our switches inside of each door and then it, you can see that's the same thing when the switch is not being pressed that ground continues on all the way to the motor on both sides so you can see when the switches are not being pressed there is ground on both sides of each motor all the time and of course with two grounds it's not going to run in order for the system to work we need to press the switch so in this case when we press up that moves this contact over and now our power that's coming in is going to flow all the way through here and then it's going to go power right here and then this is going to be our ground it's going to go all the way up here and all the way around and down and that's how it works and that's how each one of these works now we're only concerned with the right rear so let's go over to the right rear and, and uh, see if we can't start taking it apart doing some tests and while I'm thinking of it on a system that's designed like this which many Hondas are when the driver's um, circuit is working but the other three are not and that I see that quite often all three passenger windows don't work my two suspects are going to be the main switch which we already checked on this vehicle and our power window relay which is in the uh, under dash fuse box we want to make sure those two things are working because either one of those can knock out all three now we know that our front passenger is working and we know our left rear is working so I don't suspect that this is a problem and I don't suspect that this is a problem because the power and the ground come from the same sources so our problem is somewhere along this leg right here now what's nice about these civics is we can usually pop out the passenger window switch without pulling the whole door panel usually I'll just put a, a tool in here like this just to kind of lift it up just like that and then we got to pull it back because there's a little tab right on the front there and we don't want to break it off but that exposes our switch right there now um, now we can look at our wiring diagram and see what colors we need to test I went ahead and printed a connector view for that uh, right rear power window switch but before we get to that I'll go ahead and show you where the uh, power window relay is this thing here and we'll also check fuses 26 30 uh, 33 and 32 for checking windows like this I'm gonna go ahead and use the power probe I like using the power probe because I can usually do these checks pretty fast um, it as you can see it'll show the voltage on there so when I hit power like this right here it'll give me that tone and show that and when I hit ground like that it shows me a good ground and it'll light up either red or green just like that and it'll show me the actual voltage I could do these checks just as easy with a voltmeter or even a test light but I definitely like using this because you know when I'm probing I want to see do I have power or do I have ground on that contact and this makes it pretty easy and then I can go back and forth with the switch I can rock it back and forth and look for changes on here so that's why I like using the power probe all right looking up under the dash I pulled this little cover off so we can get a better look that's what it looks like right there there's our under dash fuse box and it kind of goes like this all the way up and I wish I could get a good shot and I'll try but that power window um, relay is way up in the top corner so that box comes all the way up and all the way in the top left corner is going to be the power window relay and it's in a very uh, crappy location to say the least yeah we'll see if we can get a shot of that relay where it lives it's up above that plastic white cover right there let's see if we can zoom in and check it out well zooming way in if you look close you can just read the lettering on that relay up there definitely hidden way up there 
And there's a closer look at the fuse box and the fuses we need for our windows. It's nice that Honda labels them or numbers them so we can clearly see what they are. But that's 26 right there. And there's 30, there's 32, and there's 33. So they're all in a row. We can just go ahead and test them like that. Now we got to remember when we're testing these, fuse 26 goes over here to our master switch and that has power all the time. So we don't need the key on to test that one. But 30, 32, and 33 those all are controlled by that relay, and I didn't show you the circuit for the relay, but basically we need to take the key and turn it on, and that powers up our control side of the relay when we do that, and a switch inside there closes and completes the circuit, and then it allows power to go to the other three fuses. So the short story is we need to put the key in and turn it on in order to check the other three fuses. All right, now I'm pretty confident that all the fuses are good on this vehicle. But we'll just go ahead and run through them seeing as we're right here. Alright, there's 26. There's 30. 32. And 33. We're good. Now, coming back here to our problem window. It looks like, what do we got? Five wires right there. We got one right here and then two in the, this corner and two in this corner. So let's go look at our connector view and see what's what. All right, we saw at our connector we had five wires. One, two, three, four, five. Same thing if we look at our uh, wiring diagram right on the window switch. We got five wires. And over here, here's a look at our connector. And right here, we had a wire there. We had one right here, here. And then it looked like the other two were over here. So those are the five we're trying to test. All right, let's look at number three first. It says it's a light blue. Right here it says power window control. So let's look number three up here. We'll follow it back. Now we're looking at it in our rest state, not when we're pressing the button. And it comes over here and that's gonna be a ground. So three is gonna be a ground. Four is gonna be purple. And four, if we follow it back, purple, that's gonna be power. That's gonna be coming from fuse number 32. And if we look at five, that's gonna be red. 5, red, that also goes to our switch and in the rest state, that's going to be a ground. So we're going to have ground, power, ground, and then 7 and 8 should be the two that go down to the window. So we're looking for white and blue, so we got white and blue, and yes, those both go down to the window. So and we know from looking at our wiring diagram before, in our rest state, those are going to both go to ground, as you see. So that's going to be a ground and a ground. And you can see that's why I like to use the power probe. So if we just probe it, we should hit ground, power, ground, ground, ground when we're at rest with the key in the on position. All right, to do these checks, I'm still going to use the power probe, but I switched out the tip. I'm going to use this little needle tip so I can get in there and just touch the back. And we're just going to touch it. We don't need to jam it in there. All right, before we start, I'll get you a close-up of the connector here. So this one up here in the number three position, it's going to be ground. This four position over here is going to be power. Five is going to be ground. And then our two over here, seven and eight on the bottom, those are also going to be ground. So that's how I'm going to test them. Three, four, five, seven, eight. Okay, with the key on, number three, ground. Number four, power just like it's supposed to be. Five, ground. 7, ground, and 8, ground. So powers and grounds all look good from here. Now this doesn't put a load on the system, but that's a good quick check to see if we have power and ground right here at the connector. Now we know from testing with our power probe where the powers and grounds are and everything looks good that way, but we don't know if this power and ground right here can carry a load. That's where our test light becomes our friend. Now this is a modified test light and it pulls about 4 amps and because these uh, motors that run the windows do carry a little bit of amperage. We want a little bit of, of a more heavy duty test light. So all we have to do, really I could test any of the grounds because they all go to the same place. But what I'm concerned with is that number four pin, the purple one, we know that's our power. And then the one next to it, what is that, red? That's our number five, that's, we know that's a ground. So we wanna test that. And we can also test that teal one, the number three. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll just test it right in place, just like this. And we want this test light to uh, light up nice and bright. Might be a little bit of a 
balancing act to do it here and try to stay out of the camera. All right, there's one, and there's the other. And you can see that's a nice bright test light. So we know that our wiring, or at least our power, coming up to this switch is good all the way from here all the way out. Now I'm not sure how easily you could see what I was doing with the test light, but basically all we were doing was testing 3, 4, and 5 here, which is our power and the two grounds. And so I just took one of the leads, and it doesn't matter which one on a test light, and I just touched it into the back of number 4 because I knew that was my power. And while I was holding that one there, I took the other lead, and like I said, it doesn't matter which one it was, and then I went to number 5 right here, and I saw, okay, it lit the test light, and then I went over to here, touch number three and all I was doing was touching the back of the connector the metal part and then I saw in both cases it lit the test light which pulls four amps so we know that our current or our circuitry can carry four amps of current all the way back to the battery and all the way to ground so that's an excellent test to verify that our wiring is good and Mo, what do I mean when I say it doesn't matter which wire I used on the test light a test light will work no matter if I use power and ground like this, you see we got a good light, or if I switch them and move them like that, we're still going to go. So that's the beauty of a test light. It doesn't matter which way I go, the test light's still going to light as long as, that, um, as long as the wiring is able to carry that current. And that's all we were trying to do is verify that our wiring, going back to that switch, can carry current. Alright, looking back at our wiring diagram, we know from that test right there with the test light that our power that's coming in and going all the way back to the battery is good because it can carry a load. We also know from that test that our two grounds right here that go back over here to G503, we know that's good. So we're not concerned about powers and grounds. What we don't know is whether our switch works or whether it's the motor that's bad. Now I suspect it's the motor that's bad. So what I want to do, we'll go over to this uh, white wire right here, and we'll just press the switch to the up position, and what we want to see is we want to see a change. Now because we still have the motor plugged in, um, we will not see true battery voltage, because that's what's going to happen. When we um, press the switch to the up, that's going to throw the contact over to here, and then if we follow that back up, that goes all the way to power. So that provides a power to this white wire, but we're probably not going to see a full 12.6 volts or whatever the battery voltage is currently at. Um, typically when you have the motors plugged in and they go bad, and they go bad a lot, when they go bad we'll see a voltage drop just due to it being plugged in and still trying to power itself. And so when we press this switch, our voltage can show anywhere from 9 all the way up to battery voltage. So. We won't be shocked when we see some kind of voltage drop, but what I want to see is a change. When I press this switch to up, I want to see a change on that white wire. So let's go over there and see what happens. All right, to test that white wire, we're going to use our power probe. Um, I did turn off the sound, so it won't become annoying. And we'll just probe that white wire. Hopefully I can hit it. All right, hopefully you can see we're showing a ground right there, 0 0.02 volts. Now when I pull the switch up, we want to see a change. We want to see it go up towards the battery voltage. And there we're at about 10.6, 10.5. When we release, it goes back to 0 or 0 0.2. Try it again. 10.6, 10.5, bouncing around. All right, so that's a good indication that our switch is working in the up position. Let's go back to our wiring diagram, and we'll look at it again. All right, so we tested that white wire. When we pulled it up, we had battery voltage going there. So most likely the contacts on that switch right there are good. Now we're just going to do the down position and we'll do the same exact test. We'll go to the number 8 wire, which is blue. We'll go to the we'll push it to the down position. That should throw the switch here. And now we've completed power to this side of the motor. So now it would run the other way if it was working. And we'll look for a battery voltage on that blue wire just like we did on this one. So let's go do that test. All right, we'll stick with the power probe. We'll do that same test on that blue wire way down in the corner here. See if I can get it. All right, there we go right there. We're at 0 0.02 on the voltage. Now we'll press it down and 10.5, 10.4. Release it, goes back to 0 0.2. Do it again, down and up. So that's a good indication that our down is working just like our up. Now one more test I like to do, and I could have done it 
while I was doing these other tests, but I kind of wanted to keep the test individualized. But I like to just put the power probe on the one wire and then press the button up and then press it down. And I want to see it change to both power and ground when I'm pressing the switch either up or down. And I'll do that for each wire. So I'll put it over here and go up and down on the switch and I want to see two changes. And then I'll go to this wire and I'll do the same thing. And I want to see two changes because that's what's happening when we press up over here we're putting power and ground. And when we press down over here, we're putting power and ground. And so I want to see those two changes on each wire. And typically I just do these tests all in one step, but I figured I'll just break them down and show them to you this way. All right, keeping with the power probe. And that's why I like the power probe, because I can rock back and forth and just see the changes and see what's going on. So we'll check uh, the white wire, number seven. And of course we have ground right there. We go up and we see 10.6, but what we didn't do is check down. So down, you can see we have 2.10. So we do have a voltage drop across the, you know, the power in the ground there, but that's not uncommon at all when we're dealing with a bad motor. So that's what this switch is doing, down and up like that, 10.6 and 1.9. Let's see what the blue wire is doing, see if it does the same thing, which it should. And you see we have ground. Now we'll go down, and that gives us the battery voltage, 10.6. And now we'll go up, and 1.7, 1.5. So we're pretty consistent across the switch and across everything, where we're getting a consistent power drop, even though we have, or I should say a voltage drop, we're getting it consistently across up and down on both wires. And that's usually an indication that our motor is bad. So all these tests are good enough for me to go ahead and order a new um, window regulator for this vehicle. And when it comes in, then we'll pull this door panel off and then I can do one final check right at the motor or I can do a couple different checks. But I'm confident that, um, you know, all the checks we did now, we can wait and not pull the door panel off until we get that window regulator. Now I'm confident with the test we did today that we have a bad um, window motor. Um, typically when the switch goes bad, when we throw the switch, we won't see a change on one of these wires, either the white or the blue, we wouldn't have seen a change. And we consistently saw changes on both wires. So that's why I don't believe we have a problem with the switch. If I suspected uh, an issue with the rest of the circuit, I would have had to start back tracing. I probably would have went to the power window master switch next after this. Well, that's it for the testing on this Windows circuit. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll see if I made the right call. And as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.